Welcome to FreshMaya.com. My name is Eric, and I'm going to show you how to render in passes. In my scene, I've got a ball, I've got a ground plane, I've got a spotlight, and I've got a directional light. First thing we're going to do is we are going to open up our rendering settings and make sure we've got it set to mental ray since I'm using ray trace shadows. I'll change the quality. I'm going to change it to production. I'm going to go to the common tab and let's just go ahead and make some settings since we're already in here, make some changes. All right, up here at the top where it says file name uh, prefix, I just leave it the way it is. You can change it if you want to. Uh, image format, I use Targa. You can also use uh, TIFF. You can also use uh, PNG. Any of those are good because they hold alpha information. Depends on whatever uh, application you're going to use afterwards. All right, frame animation, name.pound.ext is what I use. If you look up here at the top, you'll see the file name, and it's got a name, a number, and the extension, TGA. So that's what that means. All right, file or frame range, start frame and end frame. I got those both set to one. That way it's only going to render out one frame of animation. By frame is just going to be, it's going to render out every frame. If I had it on two, it'd be every other frame. Three, every other other frame. All right, uh, image size, I'm just going to use one of the presets, the full 1024. Go ahead and close this out. All right, let's select everything in our scene. And over here in our channel box, at the very bottom, you'll see display and you'll see render. Change it to render. That's going to show our rendering layers. Right now, we've only got one layer, which is our master layer. Over here at the far right, there's a button with a little blue ball. That's create new layer and assign selected objects. We're going to do that six times to create six render layers. I'm going to double click on this first layer and I'm going to rename it to layer underscore ground diffuse. Next layer, I'm going to name it our ball diffuse. You can name whatever you want to. This is just how I name mine. This one is going to be our occlusion. The next one's going to be our shadow layer. Next one is going to be our specular. And the last one will be reflection layer. All right, next we're going to set each one up. So we're going to right click on the ground, go all the way down to the bottom where it says attributes. And then up here at this ground diffuse tab, we're going to go to the far right where it says presets, and we're going to change it to diffuse. All right, let's go back to our channel box. We'll select the ball diffuse, right click, go down to attributes, and then change our presets to diffuse. Now I'm using 2009 version. Occlusion, presets, change it to occlusion. Shadow, same thing. Attributes, go to presets, change it to shadow. And finally our specular, change it to specular. Reflection is different. There's no reflection in that list right there, so we'll do it differently. We're going to select that layer. Select everything on our scene, right click on our layers, reflection layer, and then go to where it says past contribution maps, over to create past contribution map and add selected. Once you click on that, you'll see a little triangle next to your layer. Just click on it to expand it, and it creates this contribution map named past contribution map one. We're going to double click and just name it whatever you want. I'm going to name mine reflect pass. You don't have to name it if you don't want. I just choose to do mine. All right, since we're already on our reflection layer, let's open up our render settings and go ahead and um, create a reflection path. So let's go to our Passes tab. Before we do anything, let's right click where it says Render Using right above it. Right click, select Create Layer Override. OK, now let's go down to where it says Scene Passes. To the far right, there's a button that says Create New Render Pass. If you don't see it, just expand your Render Settings window. Click on that box, and now you'll see a bunch of uh, passes that we can choose from. Just scroll down until you see Reflection, select it. Down here at the bottom, you can add a prefix or suffix if you want. I usually add a prefix. I'm just going to go ahead and say Pass. And what it's going to do is it's going to put that prefix in front of our the name of the pass, which is Reflection. So it's going to create pass reflection. There it is, pass reflection. All right, let's create, hit that little button right there to move it down to our associated passes. Once we have it down there, 
our contribution map that we created should show up in our drop down box and there it is render pass if you look on our channel box there it is render pass and now it's in our drop down box all right let's select our pass reflection make sure it's highlighted and let's move it down to the next box all right once you have it down there you can just go ahead and just close out your uh, render settings All right, now let's choose what we want in each layer. Our ground diffuse, we don't want our ball to show, so I'm gonna select the ball, open up the attribute editor, and then I'm gonna go to the ball shape node. So just a tab that has the shape in the word. I'm gonna go down to where it says render stats, expand that, and look for primary visibility. So let's just uncheck it, turn it off. Let's go to our next layer, ball diffuse. I don't want the ground to show up, so I'm gonna select the ground, go to the attributes, and turn off primary visibility. Next occlusion, everything can be visible. Shadow, I don't want the ball. Now typically I would have everything show at once, but in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn the visibility off on the ball. Uh, reflection, specular is fine. All right, let's go ahead and just render, do a test render out on our ground diffuse layer to make sure everything is good. Okay, there's our ground diffuse, so that looks fine. Let's check out our shadows. Usually I always check shadow and diffuse. All right, if you can't see shadows, that's because we're on RGB. So we click on this little button up here, alpha channel, if you click on that. All right, so we don't see any shadows, so that probably means we're not using mental ray. Because again, I'm using ray trace shadows, so we need to render out with mental ray. And we're on MAJ software, that's why. So let's change it to mental ray. Let's go ahead and make sure the quality is on production. Okay, which it is. Let's go ahead and just set up all the layers. So reflection, let's make sure, okay, it's on mental ray. Specular, let's change it to mental ray. Our occlusion layer is fine. Diffuse layers, let's change those to mental ray. All right, now let's do another test render for our shadow. Now, if we didn't hide the ball, then our shadow would have the shape of the ball cut out of it, and it would look like a crescent. Right now, it looks like a full circle, but that's because we removed visibility of the ball. Now, if you had objects that cast shadows on themselves, then you probably wouldn't want to do it this way. You'd probably want to uh, keep visibility on everything on your shadow layer, just to make it easy. All right, I'm gonna change the environment of the background from white to black, because sometimes the white will create a kind of a, a halo effect around your objects. If I change it to black, then it eliminates that, at least for the most part. So again, uh, if you need, you can go to the view, go down to camera attribute editor, just click on that, and then scroll down and look for the section that says environment. Just expand it, and then you'll see the background color. Okay. Let's go ahead and do a full test render of uh, the main part. Let's make sure I've got my render angle set. Okay, so I'm gonna select the master layer and then just render. So this is basically what it would be like if I just did a single render of the scene and not use render passes. And that black background, of course, we could change that we could take it into GIMP or um, we could take it into Combustion or if you had After Effects or Photoshop, any of those programs like that, you could take this image and change that black background since it's just uh, alpha. Now I should have paused it during this part, but that's okay, it's almost done. You can see we've got reflection, we've got specular, we've got shadows, we've got diffuse. Now if we wanted to change any of that, we would have to, you know, change our settings and then re-render out the whole thing. And if imagine if you had a hundred frames of animation. You'd have to re-render the whole thing out. Every single change you made, you'd have to re-render the whole thing out. But we're gonna do a little bit different. We're gonna do all that in post-production 
and we can change it all very very easily very simply all right let's go ahead and save this I'll save it as uh, we'll save it as a J, uh, JPEG usually I save stuff as a PNG file and then convert it to a JPEG later it just seems to end up being a better quality but I don't really know it's just the way I've done it for a while someone told me that once and I've just always done it that way but we'll just go and save it as a JPEG